Hi everybody, welcome to video two of your World Book Day special activities. Now if you haven't already, you need to make sure you've got to watch the first video, which is me reading our cracking book for the day, What We'll Build by Oliver Jeffers. If you go and watch that first, then you'll be able to go through and follow the activities that we're doing in this. All right, so for today, you're going to need a bit of imagination, um, pencil, perhaps colours, etc. Um, and then in terms of what you're writing on, you'll find our first activity is something called a mind palace, which I'll talk about in a minute. But I'll just tell you there is a template for it. Looks like this. It's on the website if you wanted to print it off or go directly onto this. Alternatively, you can make your own kind of thing. You don't need that printed. All right, so to begin with today, our first activity is just going to be a bit similar to what we did with Clockwork. It's going to be us making links and sharing ideas on different things that came up in the book. OK, now this picture here I've used, I've called it a mind palace. It's very similar to uh, a mind map or a word web or something like that, which we've done lots of before. The reason it's a mind palace is a bit like the book. It's a lot more creative than that. It's free to kind of make connections and ideas and random thoughts kind of all come together and you can record your ideas to what we're going to look at in a variety of ways you can record it um, as words sentences uh, you can do some sketches you can do just some little doodles like you can see here whatever you're free to do what you want to do okay so if you've got the template or if you're making your own we're going to go through and i've picked out seven key kind of pages slash themes that came out to the book um, that I thought were particularly important ones we could have a look at. All right, so first things first, this very first page. Now, this was the page that made me think, wow, this book is going to be a good one. All right, so very simple. One of the things that Oliver Jeffers does is he doesn't use very many words. In fact, I think if we counted up all the words in this, it would be around 100. I don't know, not very much at all. Um, and that means that the words he is choosing are very, very powerful. So these are the things we'll build, you and I. First brick or first piece of this, this kind of uh, book that I want you to think about is, OK, what's the significance of these hands? You look at them. Whose are they? Can we describe them? And what do you think they're going to build? These are the, hand, these are the things we'll build. You and I. So I've gone for a couple of different ways of kind of keeping my thoughts. So I've said in terms of whose hands they are, it's definitely an adult and a child because I, I can tell that because of the size difference. The way they're holding it in them as well, it makes me think that they must have, they must be like, you know, it's a relationship, perhaps parents, so mother and daughter, um, father and daughter, father and son. Um, it's hard to say for definite who it is. My only thing that made me think that they might be male was that they were quite broad. I can see a wedding ring and a watch, so they're married. Um, and yeah, I mean, I just thought perhaps it's a male um, and then, yeah, child of some sort. So I've added that. In terms of describing them, again, I've already said these are quite broad and muscular. These hands, I mean, you'll have to, apologies for my little doodle down here. Um, but I said kind of, you know, dainty and pudgy. It really made me think of kind of toddler's hands. I must admit, I thought they're probably a bit sticky. Toddler's hands normally are. Uh, but that's how I described them. And then in terms of what they were building, first I started thinking, my first thought was, you know, like Lego, like, are they going to build a model? Are they building something bigger, like a real house or something? And then I started thinking, well, what if it means something that you might not necessarily be able to see? Maybe they're building hopes for the future. Maybe they're building friendships with other people. So what you can do, and as we go through this, by the way, you can pause me, start me again, whatever you want. Um, but I would pause me now, have a go at adding your thoughts about those hands and why they're important. Answer the questions that are on the brick. You can write them anywhere. And then when you're ready, we'll move on through the other pages. OK. Right, next one. And as a child, I was always obsessed with um, a, um, with with tools. So let's gather all our tools for a start. We've got tools as our second brick. And again, questions for you. What are these tools for? Which of these tools have you used before? Are there any unusual ones? I mean, the one that stuck out to me was the pig. Again, it made me think perhaps a child put that in there. And what's it for? Is it for imagination? Is it one of those stress ones where if you squeeze it, if things are going wrong, it calms you down? Um, you know, again, what's this lightning bolt for? 
is that for creativity? I know that some of these tools we used when we were building our Shadoof. So which ones can you name? What are they for? Maybe you can sketch what would go in your toolbox. Okay, again, pause me and then get ready to move on to the next brick. Right, we'll build a house to be our home. Okay, well, we can see a pretty traditional home from the outsides, I think, here. Uh, but what makes it home? Is it the bricks? Is it the roof? Is it them? Is it the fact that they built it? Is it what's inside? And how do they feel? If you look closely at their face here, how do you think they feel? How's the girl? How's, it's, I, I presume, the dad here? Again, add your thoughts. Maybe you could think about what makes your home a home. Okay. Right, this is definitely my favourite page. I don't know about you guys, um, but the pictures and kind of how vibrant it was and how it literally, I mean, it's jumping out of the watch, but it's also jumping off the page a little bit. Uh, the idea of future is our next brick. I'll build your future and you'll build mine. Mine. We'll build a watch to keep our time. Well, whose future? Who's building whose? Are they, how are they going to build each other's? And how do you build your future? Who helps you build in your future? And what do you think, if this is the daughter's future, what would your future look like? Maybe you can draw me a doodle of all the things that you see in your future. Don't forget, you can pause me on anything. You can add, you can spend lots of time on one brick, a bit less on others. It's totally your choice here. OK, now, again, this is part of there's about three or four pages that look at this idea of enemies. Um, but I've chosen this one where the enemies are first being let in. So but you don't always lose and you don't always win. So we'll build a gate to let them in. Well, why? Let, have a look at these enemies. Why do you think they were enemies in the first place? What had happened? They built, built, a, built a fortress to keep them out before. So why? Why would you? keep build a fortress how do you protect yourself normally from enemies and why do people choose to forgive sometimes again pictures words whatever your thoughts are on that brick all right just check i haven't skipped one sorry my computer went a bit funny there right again this is my second favorite page i think um, I have ranked them, um, but yeah, journeys, we've got the idea of building a tunnel to anywhere or specifically building a road up to the moon. Why do you think Oliver Jeffers chose firstly these pictures and secondly, why these journeys? If you could build a road to anywhere like the moon, where would you go and why? And how is that maybe different to what Oliver Jeffers has chosen? I like the fact as well, and I, I think what would be good is perhaps go back and watch me telling the story again, because watching it, you spot all of these. We call them Easter eggs. They're like little surprises for you to find. But, you know, the fact that the witch from earlier is now just flying randomly in space. Have a look out. There's lots of repeating images that come up. But, yeah, have a think about journeys. What are journeys to you? What are these journeys that Oliver Jeffers is representing? Right, we've got all of their favourite things here next to the earlier love that they set aside. Uh, have a ganders. Again, like I said, lots of these things come up on more than one page. Why do you think these are their favourite things? What's the significance or the importance of them? Why have they been chosen? And if you look at them, What's your favourite? What's your choice out of all of these? What's your favourite out of all of their favourite objects? I personally, I mean, as you might or may, not, may or may not be surprised by, I'm definitely drawn to the ice cream pretty instantly. Um, but I also love that this looks like the toolbox they used to build their house. So maybe that's there to represent um, the, the journey they've been on so far. Maybe it's a memory, like a cherished memory of what they've done. But yeah. Have a think about favourite things. Right. Hopefully now you will have a page like this that is crammed full of 
doodles and words and maybe you can add some colour to it to make it pop off the page. Maybe you could have a think about Oliver Jeffers' illustration style and represent it on yours. Once you've done that, you've got a choice now of three writing activities and I'll leave it completely up to you as to which one you want to go for. So, number one, we thought, imagine you are either the father or the daughter in the book. Write a recount of what you saw in your adventures and try and be extra descriptive. We looked at figurative language earlier this week. So have a think about using metaphors, similes, personification. Think about those extra vibrant pages that will help out. All right, that's your first choice. Choice two is create a comic strip showing what happens in the book, including key scenes and characters. We've put a little template up for you. We've done something similar to this before, or you can create your own, um, but that might be quite a nice way to show the sequencing of the story. And step three, imagine you are writing a set of instructions for creating one of the builds, whether it's the boat or the home or whatever. Um, can you write a set of instructions using, make sure you include a tools list, those imperative verbs, fronted adverbials, etc. Whichever one you do, I want a whole load of juicy year five skills in there, please. All right. What I would suggest is you pause me here. And then finally, I'm just going to do um, a quick go through of the different whole school activities there are. OK, so have a go at these writing activities. Then I'll tell you about your whole school activities for the afternoon. OK, so I tell a lie, there's one more thing that isn't whole school. Uh, could you, as a little extra challenge, create your perfect book front cover. So loads of books have got different front covers. We looked at the fact that Clockwork does earlier last week. Uh, looking at what we'll build, could you create an alternative front cover for it? Think about the characters, the scenes, the settings, the info, what you'd need to include. Um, this one is them, you know, looking up at this sign. We've got a mountain that we see earlier, the toolbox. Is there other things that you think are more important or perhaps just alternative that you want to include? Okay. Have a go at that. You can just do that on plain paper and then I'll really quickly, I will actually this time, talk you through the whole school activities. Right, first thing, I'm not going to go through all of it now. This is up on our website, but there is a whole school challenge of what you will build. This book is what we'll build. What would you build? Read through the instructions. It can be made out of anything. We would love, Ms. Rutherford and I, if you send some photos um, or videos, if you want to show how something works, um, of what you've been up to. Have a go at building something. This is your chance to get creative. Okay. And then... If you've still got some gas in the tank and you're still wanting more ways to explore our World Book Day, uh, we've got our World Book Day menu. Again, this is on the website, so you don't have to read it off of here, but there's different activities. You can pick and choose what you want to do. Um, and again, we'd love to see photos of anything you produce um, so that we can share and celebrate them. We're going to be back together in a really short period of time. So it'd be lovely if we can share some of the things you've been up to. OK, that's it from me, guys. Happy World Book Day. I really hope you love this book as much as Miss Rutherford and I do. And I really hope you enjoy your activities. And yeah, look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye bye.